Welcome back everyone. My name is Nick White, owner of Off Leash Canine Training. Today is our fourth video in our five video series on confidence building. And today we're gonna to be discussing my favorite topic, obedience training, and the importance that obedience training plays in confidence building and in behavioral modification. Why is obedience so important in the confidence building process? To me, I think it's very, very important. What we do every day at our dog training facility in Northern Virginia is we get the dogs really, really obedient. They're placing, they're sitting, they're downing, they're healing. Once they're solid, then we add in noise desensitization. Then we add in object desensitization. Then we add in socialization. Then we add in body management and body positioning, which is what we're gonna talk about in the next video blog, part five of our five-part series on confidence building. We start with obedience and then we move on to object desensitization, noise desensitization, socialization, and body management, and body positioning. That is our foundation. I know what you're asking. Why does my dog have to be obedient in order to be confident? He does not. I'm not saying he does. However, if you have a dog who is not confident, it's much, much more simplistic for you and for the dog to create an obedient dog and then create a confident dog versus creating a confident dog and then trying to create an obedient dog. Is it possible? Yes. Is it more difficult? Certainly, in my opinion. So why is that? A couple examples. Right now, if we have a two-week board and train in our facility who's really, really skittish with people, he's really, really skittish with noises, he's skittish with objects, what we do is we get his obedience solid. We get a sit solid. Sit, he drops. Place, he jumps up and sits down. Down, he drops into a down. Once he's really solid on that, then we add in noise desensitization. So I place him. He's in a nice, stable place. He doesn't leave until he's released. I make a noise or drop an object. He jumps up. Place, he jumps right back on. One second. He goes back into the sit. Then we repeat. What happens? After two or three minutes, his obedience outweighs his fears. Feel free to quote me on that. I'm gonna say that again. His obedience outweighs his fears. His obedience is so solid and his stability is so solid, his willingness to be obedient and stable outweighs his fear of leaving over the noise. Does it happen instantly? In some cases it does. Does it happen within 10 or 15 minutes? In 99% of cases it does. That's why it's important, that's why it's easier. If I put him in a down, I throw a blue barrel over his head like you see in our videos, he jumps up, down, he immediately drops again, we repeat. Two or three minutes, I'm throwing the blue barrel over his head and I'm doing cartwheels over him and he doesn't leave because his obedience outweighs his fear and his stabilities outweigh his fear. Now you take your dog, no obedience, very skittish with noises, very skittish with objects, we're in the facility, we're outside, um, on a leash because he can't be off leash if he doesn't listen and say we're in the facility and I make that loud bang with that blue barrel. What happens? He takes off running. Gone! Whew. And now I gotta go chase him, drag him back as he's fighting it because he's scared, drag him back to where I was and again I can't tell him to sit while I wait to pick up the new blue barrel because he doesn't listen. So he's probably not even gonna come back unless I'm holding him there dropping the barrel and the whole time he's fighting at the end of the leash. Where an obedient dog come, sit, we repeat. Done. Well, with a dog who doesn't have solid obedience, you can't make him sit to even reset to start the noise desensitization. You can't make him down to restart the object desensitization. So it's so much easier to have an obedient dog and then create a confident dog. In general, it's so much easier to create an obedient dog and turn that into a confident dog than to try to create a confident dog and then turn it into an obedient dog. There is an exception to this rule. If you have a puppy, an 8, 9, 10, 12 week old puppy, then it's easier to create a confident dog than it is an obedient dog. But I'm going off the premise that most of the people who's watching this and most of the people I know who are using our training services and coming to our facility are dogs who are six months, a year, two years, three years, up to 13 years old. Um, so if you have a two year old or a three year old or a one year old who's really skittish, afraid of noises, then it's easier to create um, obedience and then confidence. If you have a puppy, it's easier to do confidence and then obedience. So I just wanted to make sure that's clarified. Um, that's the one exception. As a puppy, much easier to get good confidence than it is good obedience and good stability and all those things. So, 
So if you have an eight-week-old puppy, that's good news for you. Start doing all of the five parts of our video blog series and confidence building, and you'll have a confident dog. And then the obedience is just something we have to add in versus adding in obedience and then trying to add in confidence, which is obviously easy. We do it all the time, but it's one less step that your dog needs, essentially. I'll you a video of a couple um, non-confident dogs that we worked with. Um, both had um, confidence issues. One was about seven months old. The other one was about five months old. Um, and you can see the results of how they were when they started versus when both those dogs finished and where they're at today. And we did the same exact thing. We used their obedience to build their confidence. If your dog has issues with people, um, as the German Shepherd and the Doberman we're getting ready to show you had, everyone who would approach them, the dogs just run away or they would hide behind the owner. Um, and they're trying to pull them out and get pet and they all, the dog just keeps running behind the owner. So what we do is we give them that solid foundation with obedience. Sit, boom, the dog drops into a sit. And he knows not to leave until he's released. So now people can approach, people can give him treats, people can pet him, people can interact with him. And then it gets them over that unrealistic fear of people. And it teaches them what I've talked about in an earlier blog, positive association with people. So again, it's so, so much easier to build obedience and then build confidence um, with an older dog than it is to try to do confidence and then try to do obedience. So check out these videos so you can kind of see what happens when we take dogs with low confidence, add obedience, and then add confidence back into it. This is a before video for five-month-old Doris. Um, I know she has a weird thing about men. Um, she seems to be completely fine with women. Uh, but she has a, I don't know, she's kind of weird with men, so I'm going to kind of show you how she is. I got hot dogs like trying to bait her into me, um, and we'll kind of show you how she responds. Doris, come here. Come here, good girl. Good girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. Doris. Come here. Come here. Doris. Come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. And you'll see here in a second, like I'll reach out to Petter and you'll see like how she really reacts. Doris, come here. Come here. There, good girl. So, uh, yeah, well, it's kind of odd, so that's kind of what we're uh, going to work on her with in addition to obedience. Doris, come here. Doris, come here. Seems like any major movement, she kind of responds. And <coughs> used to that. Doris, come here. Come here, girl. Come here. <coughs> so that's uh, kind of where Doris is at today. Um, so we're looking forward to showing your progress in two weeks. Good girl. Says Jaeger, 
seven month old Jaeger on his first lesson, very fearful of people, very fearful of dogs. Um, that's just the way he's been from the time they got him. Um, so I'm going to try to show you uh, what he does now. Jaeger, come. Come. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Walk away. The importance of obedience and behavioral modification, whether it's dog aggression, people aggression, toy aggression, food aggression, things we deal with all the time every week. We have a dog right now in our two-week board and train who's bit three people. So it's something we deal with on a regular basis. I hear the call all the time. Every, almost every day, every week, we get countless calls and emails who say, Nick, I've watched your 500 videos, I watched them all. Those downs from 300 yards away, those off-leash heels, those um, places while you throw stuff over their head, that all looks amazing, but I don't need that. My dog's dog aggressive and I need to fix that. My dog's people aggressive and I need to fix that. I don't care about all that obedience. It looks amazing, but all I want to do is fix this dog aggression. All I want to do is fix this people aggression. That's a call I get at least 10 times a week. I tell them all the same thing. What makes you think that your dog right now who doesn't listen is going to sit while I bring another dog close to him to teach him proper introductions? How is your dog who's people aggressive going to sit and be stable in order to get a treat or to start interacting positive association with people. How is your dog who you told me lunges and pulls when he sees other dogs and runs across the street and tries to attack them going to see another dog and be in a nice heel and ignore that other dog when he doesn't heal? These are questions I ask all the time and people say I have no idea. <laughs> Nor do I. So Obedience is just as important in behavioral modification as it is in confidence building. If you have no control over your dog, how are you going to fix any issue that it has behavioral wise? If your dog growls when he has a toy in his mouth, how do I get him to drop the toy? How do I get him to take the toy on my terms? How do I get the toy away from him if it's something he's not supposed to have? I can't out him because he doesn't listen. I can't out him and then uh, call him away, sit him, and then grab the toy because he doesn't listen. 
Um, so all of these things are really, really important. Obedience plays a huge role in behavioral modification and confidence building. That's what I try to stress to people. As I'm sure someone out here uh, watching has heard me tell them personally, is how do you fix an issue in a dog that you have absolutely no control over? How, how am I supposed to, you want me to properly introduce your dog to other dogs because he plays too rough, but how can I do that when he doesn't sit, when he doesn't listen, when he doesn't down, when he doesn't place, when he doesn't heal? He's just a madman at the end of the leash, horrible at gre greeting other dogs because you don't have control over him. He won't let you take his toy and he gets aggressive because you can't out him because you have no control over him. He rushes your door and he barks and like crazy and he won't leave the door because you can't say come and sit him away from the door because you can't place him away from the door. So we use obedience every day to fix behavioral issues. Um, can you fix behavioral issues and do behavioral modification without obedience? Probably. Is it going to be a lot harder? Definitely. So obedience is important in confidence building and behavioral modification. We get control over the dog and then work on noise desensitization. We get control over the dog and then we do object desensitization. We get control over the dog and then we teach it proper interaction with people and proper interaction with dogs. We get control over the dog and then he has a toy he's not supposed to have. We tell him out and he drops it. You don't have to dig it out of his mouth. We get control over the dog. You can sit him, come in and sit him away from his food bowl and take your food aggressive dog's food and take it away from him uh, or pick up his bowl. So obedience is very, very important in all of the confidence building process. Um, that's, that's what I try to stress to everyone is it's much, much more simplistic to have an obedient dog and fix behavioral issues and have an obedient dog and do object and noise desensitization and socialization than it is to have a dog you have no control over and try to make it sit while you do noises. Well, you can't even make it sit because you don't have control over it. Or a dog you have no control over, you want to teach a proper interaction with dogs, but you can't because he doesn't do anything you tell him to do. So it's really, really important. That's what you should take away from this. Obedience is the foundation of confidence building with an older dog. With a younger dog, a puppy, 8, 10, 12 weeks, confidence building, and then add in obedience. So I hope it all makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to check out our website, www.offleashcaninetraining.com. Email info at offleashcaninetraining.com. It's at the bottom of the screen. Check us out and uh, check us out on Facebook. And we're looking forward to showing you the next part of our five-part video blog, which is body uh, positioning and body management, how we get dogs and crazy places, why it's important, balance, all of those things um, we're going to cover and tell you and show you why all those things are important in confidence building with your dog. Check it out. Talk to you guys soon.